Let's do this. Are you ready? Are you listening nice and moist? (laughs) Get ready? Let's do this. All right. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Nut Up Show. My name is Odum. I'm here with my lovely wife, Andrea, looking beautiful as always. That's nice. And today we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about homeschooling Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about this article that we came across. It's called The Risk of Homeschooling Mm -hmm. by um, a professor of law, I think, or a doctor of law. So I think it was actually someone interviewing a professor of law. Right. And her name is Elizabeth Bartholet. I think that's how you pronounce it. Elizabeth Bartholet. And um, she wrote this really extensive, what is this, like a 60 page? 80. 80 page. Um. What what is what is it? it's well, called homeschooling rights. So it's an article in law in the University of Arizona Law Review. Right. So and it's a very, very thick, very heavily dense, heavily researched. I think there's what like six hundred, five hundred different citations in there. Yeah. Um. So it's very very well thought out. Um. Mm-hmm. Article and we're just going to go through it and we're going to discuss our thoughts on it because mm-hmm. obviously we've been homeschooling for what eight nine Seven. I don't even remember how many years Seven now years. A, a lot of years and yeah. then um. Because I think it's good to have these types of discussions because um, it's always good to be challenged with different points of view. Well, let's, I mean, basically she's against homeschooling. Sure. Yeah. Well, what, like we just did it. So it's good to, yeah, yeah. you didn't say that at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're not, yeah. Obviously so, not going to, obviously we're for homeschooling. We're doing it and yeah, yes. we're not just going to read articles that make us feel good. Um, yes. And I think this is the point is it's important to read opinions that are opposite to your own so that you can number one, see what the opposition is saying and then be able to refine your arguments. Right. Or even just even better. And even just to even like, be honest, to be open to changing your mind. Exactly. And be like, you know what? I was actually wrong. Yes. I should not be doing this or 100%. I should be doing this differently or, or what have you. 100%. Uh, that's how we grow. Um, and that's mm-hmm. how we, we move forward. Mm-hmm. So this article, it's called the risk of homeschooling and it's very quick read it's like it's like a page and maybe a half. a page and a half yeah. um i don't even know what it would be if it was typed out not an article but we'll link it it in one of the show notes or on whether if you're on spotify or yeah. on our website i don't know you'll, you'll find it we'll um, but it's called the risk of homeschooling and so um just to be clear it's from a harvard i think it's the harvard newspaper no, uh, reprinted from harvard magazine yes yeah and so she the in lawyer the May 2020 yeah. Um, and so the edition. lawyer, I'll just do a little intro of who she is. She's a Morris Wasserstein, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct, public interest law professor and faculty director of the law school's child advocacy program at Harvard. So she taught civil rights and family laws, specializing in child welfare, adoption, and reproductive technology. So her whole point basically is uh, child welfare. That's yep. her big concern. So I think. What well, I'll say right off the bat, um, and I'm going to ask you, I guess you're going to have lots of points because mm-hmm. I actually haven't read this actual whole law review. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think she's coming from the same place that we're coming from. Is like, how can we protect kids and how can we give kids the best education? Mm-hmm. Um, so right off the bat, that that's what I'll say. Um, well, I think maybe we should say even like what her thesis is for both this are in this article because this article actually takes quite a few quotes from the law review right. article so the main thesis is she says homeschooling violates children's rights to a meaningful education and the right to be protected from potential child abuse and may keep them from contributing positively to a democratic society so that's her thesis right basically Okay, and uh, there's a lot to say on that. Oh one, yeah, there's but, a lot um, to say on that. Do you actually? I do you even have that written down? I'd love to have it written down right in front of me so I can keep referring back to it. Uh, um, but anyways, uh, so where do you want to start with 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 this? Um, can you just do me a favor? Can you just can you just read that back one more time? Yeah. So I might even have it written down. Actually, turn that the last page over. Did I write it down? Uh, no, well, okay. you said this is bullet points. Here. Oh, okay. So it, homeschooling violates children's rights to a meaningful education yep. um, and the right to be protected from potential child abuse. And it may keep them from contributing positively to a democratic society. So meaningful education protected from possible child abuse. Mm-hmm. And then also of... Just said keeping um, them from contributing to yeah. a democratic society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, where do you want to start off uh, on, on this discussion? Um. Well, let's. I mean. 
So I'll say there's there's a couple things to consider here, even given given that thesis, and um, and and, and I think it, it ends up getting really really political. Um, yes. Um, but I, I want to try to be objective as possible and mm-hmm. not try to bring politics into it. But one of the the primary questions that I have right off the bat is. How much level of control do we want the government to have in our lives? So that is a very, very big question that I have um, that I think really needs to be discussed and debated um, because she's saying here potential child abuse Mm -hmm. and potential ability to contribute to democratic society. Mm -hmm. So do we want to allow the government to dictate what exactly that means Mm -hmm. and are we going to give them or should we give them the right to preemptively, you know, um, uh, preempt, like nip it in the butt, or, you know, to yeah. preemptively mm-hmm. say that there's potential for child abuse. So we're just going to completely take the child away from that situation. So the interesting thing is that in this law review, one of the things that she says is that um, parents essentially have 24 seven authoritarian control right. over their children and that that's dangerous. But then in the same thing, she says, I, this is one, a quote from this. She says, I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless talking about parents being, have total control of their kids and to give the powerful ones total authority. So, but isn't that what she's advocating for in the government having total control over whether a, over the education of your child. Right. So, but I think what she says in in her defense here, um, which, you know, could potentially be true is it's not maybe so much giving absolute control to the government. It's giving them control for seven or eight hours a day Mm -hmm. where you still, as a parent, you still have the child before school. You still have the child after school. Mm -hmm. So you have your time right in there Mm. to be able to, educate them as you see fit. So, and then I will push back on that again. Right. And so, I mean, think about when you were in school, who had more influence over you, your friends at school or your family, your te- your parents? Yeah. I mean, I think there comes a point when you're a kid where the, you're the parental influence is just done with, and it's more the friends at school. The people you spend the, influences the, the, the most time the most with possibly. Yeah. Because think about it too. I mean, if you, you know, you have your kids in the morning, well, what are you doing in the morning? You're rushing around trying to get them out of the door, ready to go to school. There's really no time. There's not a lot of stuff that's happening then. And it's the same thing when they come home from school, you're rushing around trying to get dinner ready and then trying to get them into bed. So it's not a lot of quality time. Yeah. So, I mean, so you're saying in in that argument is that it's just, I mean, I mean, the, the way that our whole lives are structured yes. is that there isn't enough time to do basically two sets of schooling for kids where you have mm-hmm. actual school and then you have, well, I have to teach them the values or whatever that I want to teach them yeah. outside of school yeah. because the way society's structured. Yeah, yeah. I just don't have time. So, yeah. and that's an interesting point because then it goes back to the whole idea of what do you want your life to look like and yes. how do you want to structure your life is getting a job and a career the most important thing to you mm-hmm. or is raising your kids and instilling them with the morals and values that you want them to have the most important thing. So then you sacrifice all those extra things that do keep you busy. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, that brings us to, I mean, that's our whole philosophy and what we, we've done. We've decided to put our family and our kids absolute first and foremost. Anyway, anyways. Yeah. You, but that's not to say that people that send their kids to school don't. Oh, of course not. Right. So, but I think it's just also we're in a different situation where our child had different learning needs that were not being addressed in the school. So that's another reason. Right. So, so I guess maybe before we jump on to this, another topic here. So, getting back to control of the government. So, or should the government have control over, over our kids and their education? So, the other question that I have um, regarding this is so, obviously, for me, I'll say that. I don't even know how I would categorize myself politically. I don't, I'm not affiliated with any of those sides. I think they're all just ridiculous. Um, But what I am for is a a particular libertarian point of view is that the government should be involved as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And I truly strongly believe in people's individual freedoms Mm -hmm. to make their own choices and Mm -hmm. people's um, individuals to not have the government 
butt into their lives and tell them mm-hmm. what to do. Um, so I'm for a small government, government that, inter- that you know, it does what it needs to do in order to allocate resources mm-hmm. or whatever to be able to provide for its citizens. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it should not have the authority to be able to tell you what to do. And it's very apt because you look at all the things that are happening today um, about the government. And a lot of people are talking about government overreach, right? You talk about mandates. Um, this is what the government says. Well, you have to do this or you have to do this. Like, why are you doing this? Because that's the benefit of your health. It's the benefit of my health. It's the benefit for everyone's health. Yeah. So the question that comes out with that is like, who's deciding, who's making these decisions on what the best course of action is? So when mm-hmm. you go into homeschool, or sorry, when you go into the actual education system, who is making the decisions on what to actually teach the children? Mm-hmm. Because everyone has different values. Yeah. So is that something that we need to consider here? It's like, if you're just going to, if you're going to pull kids and say like, you have to send them to school, who is going to be in charge of what it is that they're actually teaching them? And what happens if those values don't align? So I wouldn't even say it's even about values. And I don't think, I think that is only part of the reason why people pull their kids from school. I think a big part of it is it's not the what it's the how that's being taught. And, um, even something as simple as history. I don't think history is taught in the best way in school because it just doesn't, it's not taught chronologically. And so Tristan had a really hard time understanding they were ta- they were teaching about native Canadians, which is really important, but it was completely out of context. So he didn't, un- he couldn't understand what, why are we learning? Where did these people come from? And so we learn when we did history together, we've started from the beginning to then we were able to really talk about and he was really able to understand Native Canadians. So it's more even the how things are taught and when you even get into kids that have learning disabilities or extra learning needs, that's a big thing too. So it's not necessarily the what, it's also the how. So that's an interesting point because you're saying that that was the great, good way or the best way for Tristan to learn and mm-hmm. it could be the, the way for other people to learn. Yeah. But it's also not necessarily the way that other people like to learn 100%. because how I learn history, I like learning things in chunks where you take it, whereas like, I'm going to learn about this part of history. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to learn about World War One and World War Two. Mm-hmm. That's a whole kind of course. And I was like, oh, then I'm going to learn about ancient Greece and whatever. You don't necessarily need to know about ancient Greece before you talk about what happened in World War One and World War Two. Yeah, it could help you give mm-hmm. context to certain things, possibly, but mm-hmm. even that, I would say it's a pretty big stretch. Mm-hmm. But it's nice to modular, modular, modularize things so that as you're moving forward, you don't have to necessarily be dependent on doing well at the first start. Because if kids start falling through the cracks right initially, yep. then how it's taught, you know, it's like it builds on it. But I mean, mm-hmm. you need to know that too, because like mathematics, you need that, yeah, it you does need, need to build. Yeah, yeah. But for things like history, maybe it doesn't. So, I mean, I could see that, but yes, that's 100% right. Is yeah. that so many people just learn completely differently, yep. but yet when you're in a school environment, that is not taken into consideration. Mm-hmm. So that is a big object, object, objection that I have for, yep. for school is that, are you really taking into account the needs of my child, mm-hmm. right? You're telling me that you can do a better job of raising or educating my child mm-hmm. than I am. You need to demonstrate to me how you're actually going to be able to accomplish this. Mm-hmm. And in our life and our experience through yeah. going to school, they have never demonstrated the ability to be able to teach our kids better than we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, do you have anything you want to say? Or? Not about that. No. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, I'm in agreement. So, yeah. So there was one interesting thing that, that she said here, um, da, 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 which I really, so I really do agree. And so, um, da, 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 da. so, okay. Yeah. That's the right. <laughs> Um, oh man, we could get into so many different things. Well, here. I was going to say so, like, there's 80 pages we could talk right. forever. about. Uh, so, so here's the other thing. So, Basically, I think one of the points that she's trying to make is that homeschooling is pretty much an unregulated thing Mm -hmm. where basically anyone could just say like, you know what? I don't want to keep my kids at school and Mm -hmm. I don't want to have my kids at school. I'm just going to pull them out and then Mm -hmm. they're just going to do whatever. I agree with her in that I think there should be some level of regulation in order to protect children from, you know, parents not actually giving them education because of 
whatever reason they might have. Mm -hmm. So where she's saying that there should be some kind of testing or whatever, like I agree that there should be regulation. I don't know what that looks like. No. And like her kind of solution to this is that parents, the burden of proof has to be on the parents to prove that the school is not meeting their child's needs. And that's why they should be taking their child out. So that's one thing that she suggests, which I mean, then you're putting, how do you implement that number one? And who's the arbiter of that number two? Um, And then not only that, then they have to provide curriculum. They have to do tests. The children should be able to um, meet their peers level of um, proficiency. And then um, there has to be regular visits by by an agent of some type to the home to ensure there's no abuse happening. So a couple things about that. Um, if you have a kid and the reason you're taking your kid out is because the school is not able to um, meet their needs because they have a disability or a delay, then they're not going to meet the kid, the, their peers level. Um, and I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with standardized testing anyways. I think that's a bunch of bullshit because it's just how good you can take a test. It's not what you know. It's how good you can memorize stuff. So I don't agree with that. Um, yeah. And just the contrarian in me, I'm just like, I don't (laughs) want to give you my curriculum. (laughs) Like none of your damn business. Right. So this is where maybe we can have a discussion because I do think like, and this is very, a very, interesting Mm -hmm. topic. I could talk about this for, for a long time, Mm -hmm. but how do you put a test on a parent to decide their level of competency in being able to teach their children? Like I would, I think I would be okay if I had to go to the school board or some whatever body and say, listen, this is my plan of how I attend to do school. Right. If we lay out our actual plan, it's like, we're going to stay home. And we're going to wake up and, you know, we're going to start school at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then from 9 to whatever, we're going to do science, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to work one-on-one time with the kid until noon o'clock. And then we're noon o'clock <laughs> until noon. Yeah. And then, you know, then we're going to do this, this, that. And this is going to be kind of, this is our homeschool day and our structure. And then I'll say like, okay, well, let's compare this to what you guys do with our kids. You know, there's mm-hmm. 40 kids in there. They're running around, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, this is how my school is going to be better than your school. Mm-hmm. And then they'd be like, yeah, that sounds reasonable or whatever. Go ahead. Um, I think that's okay. Do you think that's okay? So Would you the, be willing to do something like that? So the thing is, is here in Nova Scotia, I mean, regulations are different every in every province. And as she says in every province and every state. Yeah. And in every state, it's the same thing. Sometimes there's regulations. Sometimes they're not comparing Ontario to Nova Scotia, Ontario. There's no regulations. You don't have to do anything except file an intent to homeschool form. And that's it here in Nova Scotia. Every year you do have to put forth a curriculum, what you're doing in each subject for each child. You have to file that with the board of ed. And then at the end of the year, you also have to do a summary of how your child has progressed. So, What's interesting is on the Facebook group that I'm on with Nova Scotia homeschoolers, like the bureaucracy is what it is. There's not enough people to be reading all of these things. And so you don't get your kind of like approval on your curriculum until like November sometimes, especially with COVID and with so many more people choosing to homeschool. Um, It's the same thing with the end of year reports. It's the same thing. People are not getting any feedback until they file it in, you know, end of June. They don't hear back until September. So it's kind of just like a rubber stamp basically. So this is, this is actually, uh, sorry, this is my entrepreneur stuff it's thinking mm-hmm. and I'm totally going to go off the rails here. Mm-hmm. Is there a way, cause you know, people can just create a school, right? And there's, mm-hmm. it's a regulatory body. That's a oh, worse school now. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to somehow become a regulatory body for homeschooling? So instead of the government doing this, could you, stamp, could we create an actual organization that's, you know what, we're part of the homeschool, you provide resources for parents, all that jazz. Just imagine a place, the one-stop shop for homeschoolers. So there is something kind of, and parents have come together and it's called like a homeschool co-op, like cooperative kind of thing, like similar to the preschool that the kids were at where parents would come in and volunteer to help out or that was part of be like your... 
but you'd actually send, you're sending your kid to another school. It's like a, it's like an, yeah, like a get together type thing. Right. Different parents can teach different things. So that's a little bit different than I guess. So yeah, that's, that's but... pretty, pretty different from what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'm like just an saying actual, that's the only thing I know of. So I'm, yeah. I'm actually saying like an actual approved regulatory body of homeschoolers mm -hmm. that does this whatever approval or whatever, so that you can, you know, yeah. legally Homeschool. homeschool your kids that or whatever, would, I right? mean, that would be a solution, like part, like of a, a solution yeah. to it, right? Just like think of anything, like if mm -hmm. you want to get your license to become a mechanic or license to do yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, how can you get your license mm -hmm. to homeschool? Yep. This would be like the body that would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't know if I a hundred percent would agree with something like that, but. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. That's what the, the questions that I because have then for you like, is, Then I guess like my point is, okay, well, like then do you need to have a license to even have kids, right? Like, and then what, and so my, well, I guess we'll get into it, but I like what, I just don't, that doesn't sit well with me, I guess. It so, just feels weird. So, the, and th this is another question that, that I have of, what is the responsibility of an actual citizen? And there's this fantastic movie that I'll recommend to everybody right now. It's an old movie. It's called Starship Troopers. <laughs> it is a fantastic it's so it's so social commentary, uh -huh. um, which didn't get its dues over time. But I think now it's even maybe more prevalent or not. Mm. But in that movie, it's, it's in the future. And in order to be able to have children, you'd mm. have to become a citizen. So just being born doesn't in the world make doesn't you make you a citizen. citizen. You had to either you had to serve like five years in the army or whatever yeah. it is or or you have to do some type of duty in order to be allowed to have kids. And you mentioned that point. It's like, mm -hmm. should there be some kind of test for you to be able to have children? Mm -hmm. And right now, obviously you can't, it is easier to have a child than it is to adopt a dog or a cat <laughs> or anything because <laughs> you can just have kids. Yeah. You have kids, you go to the hospital, baby pops out. Boop, and then they're it's like, there you easy, go. But yeah, well, no, but, but, <laughs> but there you go. Right. Yeah. There's no regulations for that. No. Should there be? Well, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. I mean, I guess in China, they had the one child thing. So that's a regulation in, mm. in sorts. Uh, it didn't limit who can have kids, but it limits to the amount. Your family. But could you imagine yeah. then you get to the point, we're talking about what she's saying, that, oh, parents have 24-7 authoritarian control over the kids, mm -hmm. which, first of all, I don't even agree with that statement because there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that you can do to get your child taken away from you. Mm -hmm. um, but... Should there be some type of mechanism that or test or whatever you have to pass to be allowed to have kids? But then it doesn't. It's not only about that. Then, especially if you're talking, you're talking about who can homeschool and who can't. And I guess one of my questions is, yeah, where does where does it end? Do you have to have a license to have kids? Is is the government required then to come in and make decisions? for health decisions, medical decisions for your child as well, right? Because there are cases where parents used homeopathy to try and treat their kid and the kid died. There was a court case in BC right. just, I think a little while ago. So, so how do you stop, how do you idea. stop things like that from happening yeah. without encroaching on people's Right. How do you protect the I most guess, vulnerable? Yeah. I, I in know. terms of protecting people's freedoms to be able to do whatever yes. it is that they want to yes, do. Yes, exactly. Right. So if you say like, oh, there was a case here in Canada where some kid got sick and they're like, oh, I'm just going to do this homeopathy, homeopathy therapy and the kid dies. Mm -hmm. Is the solution to stopping something like that to be like, that's it. Blanket everybody. Everyone has to take, yeah. <laughs> everyone has to take a vaccine. Everyone has to, to have this level of Drugs. You need, a, you, know. you need a caseworker that is going to approve your decisions for your medical treatment of your child. So, so that's, I mean, that's how do you implement it? And then it really know. becomes, I mean, you can keep saying, oh, it's a slippery soap, which I hate that saying, mm -hmm. but the more you're, you're talking about authoritarianism mm -hmm. and that the more rights and more power you give to a single entity, mm -hmm. AKA the government, the more and more authoritarian it becomes until all of a sudden you realize that you have no, no more right. actual it's freedoms, freedom. right? It's like, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to teach my kid about slavery. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, you have to teach them from this prescribed book that is approved from our educators yeah. who has said, this is the right way to teach about slavery. Yeah. So, and even if you just want to think about how school teaches now, because I have a big problem even with just the curriculum and the stuff that they're teaching kids yeah. nowadays, right? So, um, you know, a lot of the things that they're teaching kids now, for example, they're teaching kids about gender and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So 
I, the way, you know, I mean, I, see, I don't even, I don't even know what language to use. I honestly I don't even know what language to use. I, like for me, I'm like, there's males, there's females, there's two genders. It's by biology. Like, that's it. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. And then they're teaching kids now. Well, no, it's, you can be whatever you want. You can be male, you can be female and whatever. And there's all kinds of issues that I have with that. I don't want to talk about that mm-hmm. because that's not what it is today. We can get into it at some point, I'm sure. Um, but I'm like, I'm a scientific guy. I mean, males impregnate females and females have babies and that's what it is. Majority. Yes. There's stuff that's in between and whatever mm-hmm. biologically. Yeah. I, I agree with that, but yeah. I mean, come on, let's, let's facts are facts here. Mm-hmm. And then to teach against that and saying like, well, this is the way now, you know, all these different genders and these different identities. Mm-hmm. And so let's just say then the government says, well, you, we have to teach your kids mm-hmm. because we're the best thing for it because we have to protect our kids from child abuse. And then they, t- then they take the kids away. Then they have to, they teach them something that you don't agree with. Mm-hmm. How is that a good thing for, for your child? How's that a good thing for me? As like, you know what? I want to teach my kids these specific things about science, about technology, about uh, democracy, about critical thinking, all these okay, kinds well, of things. I'll, I'll even give you a really good example because the kids and I were, were talking about genetics right now. And we went over chromosomes, chromosome numbers and different chromosomes and mutations and genetic um, disorders and that sort of thing. And I did wonder, what do they teach in school right now about X and Y chromosomes? Like, I actually don't even know where, as a biologist, this is my wheelhouse, is molecular biology. What do they teach in school? Are they teaching X and Y? And that, yeah, some people definitely, there are disorders where you get X, X, Y. So like, I don't even know what they're teaching, but I'm teaching this is actual biology that has been proven. So yeah, that's what I agree with. And yeah. that's actual science and yeah. there's no, yeah. Yeah. So this is how I was saying, it can get really political, right? Because it's all about how things are going on now. And if you're following the news and following things that um, aren't necessarily, I guess, mainstream news or what have you, Mm -hmm. I mean, you could just see that there's such a, there's such a culture war going on right now. It's so, it's so demoralizing. And it's just like, why can't we just present people like for education, like education should be, here's the information, here's the facts and here's, the different sides of the arguments and let's all come up with ways to think about solutions to these problems or think about whether you agree with it or whether you don't agree with it. Well, and I think like talking about someone who clearly is on the opposite side of us on an issue, I think that's important. And I think a lot of times it's like, oh, I don't want to hear anything or read anything that I don't agree with because it's, you know, it's hard for me to do. But I think, again, it's very important to read things that you don't agree with yep. to challenge you. It's really important. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, so yeah. So, I mean, in, in this, in this article that she's talking about, she's, she's saying um, stuff that um, the majority of people that are homeschooling are conservative, have conservative mm-hmm. Christians beliefs mm-hmm. and they want to remove them from mainstream culture. Yeah. Um, and while I, like, I never thought I would have myself, see myself as standing up with people that have conservative Christian beliefs um, <laughs> and be like, what, really? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I do agree. I, I do, I personally think that there yeah. does need to be some type of protection from kids from okay. mainstream culture because like, look at, what was, what was the, the Grammy Awards of that video that the person was like on the TV, she's like twerking with another girl or whatever. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, what, it was. What was, it? was it Cardi B? Yeah. Whatever. But it's like, that's mainstream. And that was like, this is so empowering. And like women grinding on national TV. And like that's, you know, and that's okay. It's like, I don't think that that's okay. I don't think teaching yeah. young women that are eight, nine, 10 years old, that they could just wear whatever they want and just do that kind of stuff. And that like, that's okay behavior, right? So there yeah. is conversations that need to be had on, what is appropriate to teach children at what age? Okay, so 100%. However, in this, in the law review, what she gets into basically is is some much more detail about some of these Christian conservative movements. And okay. so one of these Christian conservative movement, movements is um, 
fundamentalism where it's like the, the Duggars, like the quiverful movement where you have as many kids. Sorry, is there the Duggars? The Duggars family. The, Can you elaborate? The 19 I, kids and counting. So they're a TV show. It, they were a TV show, okay. TLC TV show where they had 19 kids and it was just basically you don't use birth control. You have as many kids as God wants you to have mm-hmm. and it's all homeschooled. There's, um, it's basically female subservience where they're, they have to have long hair. They have to wear skirts. They're just raised to be mothers. And so they don't really learn anything in homeschool other than homemaking. Mm. Um, so that's part of it. Um, I might be onto something. <laughs> uh, the other part is, so their main lobby group that she talks about in here, um, I forget the name of them. I was trying to look it up. Um, but what they do is any time there is in any of the states and there's actually a chapter in Canada as well. Anytime there's any type of court case against people um, for homeschooling. And usually it's because the court, there's a court case because it's about child abuse. This group comes in and because they have huge lobbying power and they get the court, the court, They'll rule in favor of not, they won't always rule in favor of the child, but they'll definitely they try to rule, make new regulations for homeschool, but they're always watered down because of the lobbying efforts of this group. That is basically, um, it's Christian conservative, so fundamental you, Christian conservative. So can you back up a little bit here? Because yes. I'm a little bit lost in what yes, you're saying. Yes. So, cause you started talking about the Duggars. So yes, yes. they're part of this. What type of Christian conservative? They're Christian group. conservative, yeah, yeah. but there probably is probably a different name for yeah, for I what kind of what they follow. Yeah, I don't know what the name is. But basically, they were on TV, and didn't a couple of the sons or one of the sons come into uh, he goes, in the limelight because he did a lot, a lot of really bad things? He's going right? to court in November with really egregious child pornography charges. Right, yes. just against um. Yeah, and then he, there's even some stuff of abuse like within oh, he, his own family, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, he already did. He it's, It came out, he did already abuse his sisters. Um, yeah. And also, he, there was the whole, that Holly Madison thing, with Holly, not Holly Madison, Ashley Madison. Oh, the, the, yeah. the, the dating website. Mm-hmm. So sorry, so this, so that was just an example of that, gr- right. of that fundamentalist Christian group. And she does talk about that fundamentalist Christian kind of group, but the name of it's the leading homeschooling advocacy movement and it's called the homeschooling legal defense association. And so there's chapters in every state and there is chapters in Canada too. So basically they will provide funding. If you're a member, they will provide legal assistance and funding. If you come up on charges for something related to you, related to homeschooling. Yeah. So they and these are help. criminal charges, obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So not only that, they also have um, a research arm, which is not supposed to be, they say they're not associated, but they definitely are. And that research arm is called the National Home Education Research Institute. Um, And so the main guy was founded in 1990. And so the main research, basically the research is showing that homeschooled children do um, the same, if not better than kids in regular school. And they use these, um, studies in this data to bolster their position that homeschooling is just as good, if not better than regular schooling, but it's very by bi- like, it's very biased. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's back up a second yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. Um, so let's get back onto this Christian conservative group or mm-hmm. fundamentalist group. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you could tie a lot of stuff with, oh, you know, Christian, like the whole church and everything, corruption, sexual scandals from all the, the yeah. bishops and all. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty, I don't want to say it's really widespread or, or what have you. Oh, it's systemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Don't>, that word. <laughs> no, this one is, um, yes. Yeah, you know, they keep shoveling people all around the place and hiding them or, or what have you. Yeah, yeah. So I do agree, though. Like, listen, like if a group has a particular tendency to do a specific, specific type of crime, Mm -hmm. how do you protect those children? Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the case of the Duggart family or whatever, Mm -hmm. something should have happened where these kids should have been somehow helped out of this abuse, I would imagine. Yeah. So how do you protect that? And how do you protect them while at the same time protecting my freedom to be able to raise my kids and to educate them? Right. So... So I do. So this is why there's so many different topics you can talk about, and I don't want to get into the politics about there's lobbying groups and whatever. Yes. So that's obviously why every the system itself is corrupt. So how can the system yes. fix it if it's corrupt itself? Yeah. But 
let's talk theory here. Mm -hmm. How can you devise a system that can help protect kids that are vulnerable and do need help and also protect our freedoms? So this goes to a larger question, an umbrella question, because her main contention is kids that are homeschooled are not subject to the same oversight that, or yeah, I guess oversight is the only word I can think of right now. The same oversight that kids in typical school are because um, reporting to the Child Protective Services, C- CPS, yeah. the majority of that happens reporting through happens through teachers. Yeah. However, you and I both know tons of kids have abuse that is happening at home that is not reported and they still go to school. Right. Just because the majority is reported doesn't mean that the system itself is actually getting all of them. I wonder what percentage, like how would you even know what percentage? Because obviously it's going unreported. So that's what I'm saying is it's not just kids in homeschool, it's kids across the board. So you can't just protect kids that are homeschooled. You also have to think of those other kids that are falling through the cracks in typical school. That's the thing. I mean, it boil, what it really boils down to, I think. Yeah is that it's not the fact that homeschooling itself is bad. It's, it's, a, it's there's bad parents. There's parents. bad people and there's bad parents. So if a bad, if a person is going to be a bad homeschooler because they're negligent or whatever, or they're abusing their kids, getting that kid to school and then coming home, they're still going to be abused okay. or what, what have you. You know what I mean? Yes. And so the other, she has, I don't know how many different court cases in here that she gives as examples of, people that are child abusers that homeschool and they've been the court cases. However, each one of these examples, because she's saying the whole point is, well, um, parents that are abusers are going to keep them their kids in homeschool so they're not subject to this oversight by teachers so, that, so, that, that, so that it won't get caught. That's basically. what she's saying. That's what she's saying. Every single example that she gives, the kids were in typical school. CPS was called because there was an issue that the teachers found. Mm -hmm. CPS went in to investigate, nothing happened. Then later, the parents took the kids out of school and started to homeschool them so that they wouldn't run into the CPS problem later on. So it's not about homeschooling, it's about CPS doing their job and they need to do a better job. And then the the court case, like, I mean, I can't, it's unspeakable what happens to these children in these examples, but it, it happened after the first CPS call. Yeah. So because the parents are like, oh, well, they're they're quote unquote on to me or whatever. Yes, exactly. So it's it's a bigger systemic problem than homeschooling is what I'm saying. Right. So then that that takes it that takes us all the way back then is like where let's where's the root of the problem? The root of the problem is parents that shouldn't be parents. Exactly. Should Should you you? should you be you know, maybe we do we do we reach it at that level then? Do we go up high and be like, you know what? Yeah. You have to serve in the army or you have to do something that proves that you are a responsible human being. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know if I, I don't mind know. that. I like to be honest, like in, in a, know. in a, in a way where it's like, if I can prove to myself that I can cr- think critically handle responsibilities and then say, okay, you have, you've proven that you can do this here, here, have at it. You have all the rights and responsibilities of a free person, right? Mm-hmm. You want to homeschool your kid. You want to put them through school whatever you, we trust you to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Is that a, I, I, again, forget about how the government's going to oversee it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. In theory, is that a good thing? I, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's really tough. I'm going to say, I think it is I because know. look at all, look at all the people. I, I, I would say, look, I don't know these people, <laughs> but I'm saying like people that probably shouldn't have kids. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, whether they're in a bad financial situation and they can't afford the proper care or do you know what I mean? Or they, mm-hmm. they can't look after the child and they just keep having more kids or what have you, yeah. right? Like this, like this family, right? Like, yeah. um, I don't know. Is that going to stop all of that from happening? No, but you know, if you're already at this position where like, like, I, like, I don't know, again, I don't even know what the criteria would be yeah. of like how you judge a human Maybe this is a bad idea. I don't know, right? But if there was something that was totally, that could just somehow judge your capabilities of being a good parent, but that Mm -hmm. what does that what does that mean, right? So, like, I don't know. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe it's a bad thing. Like, maybe I'm saying it's not a bad idea, but I think it's a horrible idea. I guess because how the hell would that even even work? I don't know. 
I really don't know. Yeah. But so, but I guess the whole point is, is like in this whole law review article is it's basically, she's going after this one organization and that's basically every single example of, of law stuff is she's talking about this. But I like that though. I commend that. I don't I, have a problem. No, with I that. don't have a problem either. However, she's painting all homeschoolers with the same brush. And that's where things, that's where things in government, it's like, it's, it's what's the problem? Mm -hmm. Oh, homeschoolers aren't homeschooling their kids enough. So what's the solution? Bam, take out the hammer. Nobody can homeschool, right? There's no nuance to anything no. and looking at individual cases. And I, and I guess my other problem with it is, you know, she's talking about the arguments that homeschoolers give. And the main, one of the main arguments that she cites homeschoolers give is that homeschool children do as well or better than their peers that are in school. And she's saying all the research that's done is part of this homeschool association associated with this homeschool association. And that's the only research that she's looking at. So obviously that research is going to be biased. I don't even care about that research. I don't even, I don't even pit like be but, person. Anyway, so go, no, go but, my, but my point is, is she's not looking cause she does say there are kind of two groups. There's this, you know, the group that's, the reasoning is religion. And then this other reason is there's multiple different reasons. You know, maybe you want your kid, you're in high level extracurriculars or your kid has a learning disability or I forget what the other reason was. Um, so she says that there are those reasons, but it's like, so take that group and then study that group and see what their outcomes are because it's going to be different than this, than, right. than the Christian group. So she doesn't talk about that very much. It's just basically going after this one association group. Yeah. So that's what my issues are. Is she justified of going after this group? Oh, a hundred percent. I think she is. Yeah. It sounds like it, you know, because they're, they're all the lobbying efforts they've done. There's like, there's like no regulations or restrictions in the States that they've really gone hard at. So. Yeah. 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 Because they want to be able to do whatever they want with their kids at all times. And yeah. should that be allowed? I'm not saying that that should be allowed because mm -hmm. no, you should not you should not have authoritarian control over your kids to a certain point. You should have absolutely a say into how your kids are educated, into mm -hmm. what kind of things that you're going to, what you're going to have a say into what you think. Oh, see, this is where I, I, I find myself getting tripped up. It's like, I was going to say, you have a say into what you think is best for your child, mm -hmm. but what you think is best for your child could be completely different than what I think or mm -hmm. what the law thinks is best for your child. So maybe I have to be careful with how I say things because Maybe that's not necessarily true because these groups fundamentally think that this is best for their children. Yeah. But maybe I don't. Well, even not just best for their children, but best for society because they're wanting to build this society, this type of society with these fundamental Christian values. I'm not saying Christian values are bad, but I, but these type of fundamental Christian values where they don't believe in any type of ethnic diversity, they um, don't believe in equal rights of women and children. That's the huge thing. I, I don't agree with obviously. So. Yeah. I don't know anything to state about any of their, the beliefs. Cause yeah. I have no idea what, what, what they are. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very complicated, but I also, I guess the, the other thing that she says that I really, I really take issue with is, is saying that it's not just about the academic portion of it, but it's also the becoming a, a functional member of society piece of it. And if you're looking at it, obviously, through this lens of the Christian, fund, Christian fundamentalism, then absolutely you can make that argument. But I would argue on our side of it, you know, number one, I don't want my kid to be like a drone and come out of school ready to go into the workforce and just, you know, be a widget maker. Right. And this that's is again, one of the reasons why we took our kids out. Um, but also I don't necessarily think school even makes you ready for employment no, that we can have that argument as well. Yeah, you, you, And that's the thing is who's, who's deciding what a productive member of society, society is too. And that's what I was saying. Like, cause she's saying a productive member of society that's kind of ready to employment and contribute to society. But then you get into, then you get into, well, what about people that have physical disabilities or developmental disabilities that cannot contribute to society in the way that right. she says Right, and I, I honestly positive. don't, I honestly think that she's smart enough to know that, you know what, in that specific case, yeah, I'm not saying just throw those kids in school because they yes. would do better. I, I, I truly no, don't I think that she would I, be targeting I, I people like that. that. 
but I'm uh, just I'm just bringing it up because that is a subjective situational thing right. right and what that term means to me when you hear I want you to become a productive mm-hmm. what is it productive member, member of society, society. To me, what that is, is I need you to become a slave to the system. Comply. You just You just comply. You just shut up. Don't question anything mm-hmm. and just do what everyone says is best. Yeah. What's best? Go to school, get debt into your education, get a job, buy a house, get more debt. Yeah. Be, be constrained to always having to work till you're 65. Maybe you can have enough money to retire and then maybe yeah. do what you want to do. And like all like, and this is the whole premise of nutting up. It's like, no, you have to do what's best for you yeah. to live the best possible life for you. Mm-hmm. I want to teach my kids that you don't have to go through that route. If they want to do that, mm-hmm. they're hundred percent able to do that. But I'm trying to teach them that if you have a passion for something or there's other things that you want to do other than work at a job for eight, nine, 10 hours a day, every single day until you're 65 years old, there are tons of options out there. Stuff that I never knew was even yeah. available to me. I just, for me growing up, that was just the way. Yep. Become a productive member of society. 100%. Not even that, it was just like, you just go to school. Like there was no even thought mm-hmm. outside of, after I finished high school, I go to university. That is literally the only thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's like I had to do it. So yeah, becoming a productive member of society are completely different. Like there's a completely different way to interpret that depending on who you are and depending on what your goals in life are. Mm -hmm. Because someone like Jeff Bezos, I don't even know what his education level is. Um, He's become a pretty productive person of society through not going through traditional means, right? A lot of people that are highly, highly successful Mm -hmm. do not come through traditional means of education or, Mm -hmm. or what the path everyone kind of lays out for people. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Again, not to say anything is good or bad. I mean, you know, you put but your kids through is, school, is that that's fine. Ways, the point is, is there's different ways to go about it and p- different people have different needs. It's not the one size fits exactly. all, right? It's not like, exactly. well, we have to put all our kids through school or yeah. we have like, that's yeah. like, to me, I school is, it's in a, I guess maybe this, this is our bias, I guess you can say it, which I try to not yeah, think of, Yeah. but I feel like school is almost an assembly line where it's like, this is the way that we teach kids. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you fit nicely onto the assembly line where you can get the education. Cause they do like, I mean, I did get educated. I did learn things through Mm -hmm. school, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, And I turned out just fine. I think Um, maybe, (laughs) maybe maybe not, (laughs) but it's hard because yeah, like for us, Tristan, well, it doesn't quite fit into that box. Maya, uh, you you know, so it's like, there needs to be alternatives. There needs to be nuance in things. And Mm -hmm. if you can figure out a better way, especially for some individual person, Mm -hmm then who are who is someone else to say that you can you you can't do that the the other thing i want to address and what she's talking about too is you know she talks about kids m- missing out on um kind of like i guess like almost like extracurriculars and a kind of diversity of interactions with people and with thought and Obviously, I have a lot of exposure to other homeschool families, and I can tell you, in, especially in terms of social, because again, that's always brought up, is how are you going to socialize these kids? So I think the biggest thing is every homeschool family that I know works their butt off to make experiences and make different social interactions for their child mm-hmm. and yep. wants to wants to have that. There was, I don't know how many different field trips we went on in Sudbury. It's the same thing here before COVID. There was all kinds of different opportunities. Different for activities. Kid, activities. Yeah. Um, and even with us, like during, everything was shut, is shut still, basically shut down for COVID. But we did, you know, it was important to me in terms of community is to, for the kids to know, um, to be grateful for what they have and to give back to the community. And that's why we did do volunteering last year. Yep. And so how many kids their age do stuff like that? Like, I, I don't know, maybe it is a lot, I don't know, but to have that opportunity and to be able to not have to worry about doing school all day, but to go once a week in the afternoons and give their time, right. like that's really important. 
And this is the difference between, so this is the difference between homeschoolers like us, which I think is the majority yeah. of, of, of homeschoolers, to be honest, that mm-hmm. are act. The reason why we pull our kids out of school is because we want to give them a better education that they can yes. get in school, or at least that's our belief anyways. Yes. Um, and the thing is, is when you put your kid through school, they're just like, well, they're in school, so they're getting all the stuff that they need yeah. to get. So I'm not going to do any work or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, it's the homeschoolers. Like you said, that's like, we're actively trying to make sure they do get social interaction, yeah. that they do learn about their community and all that kind of stuff. Cause even just if you're in school, doesn't mean you're getting good social interaction or positive. No. Social I mean, you can, there's bullying or there's a kid that just, they're an introvert. They just kind of sit by themselves, you know, and that they just go through school, their, their head down, you know, not getting noticed or whatever. Right. Yeah. So there's, it's like, just because you're in school doesn't mean that you're getting all these things. And I think that's where the disconnect really is between what she's saying and what we're doing. Because I think if we honestly, if we sat down and had a conversation with her, this, she'd be yes. like, you know what? You guys are doing fine. What you guys are doing is admirable. Yes, obviously. Yes. I don't want to just say that you can't do that. But she's targeting all these crazy groups and targeting, yes. talking about child abuse and really protecting kids, which yeah. is important. But I think where we're going to differ is how do you actually go about doing you that? Go about doing it. But th- maybe she would say like, yeah, you guys are doing good, but... I'm still going to stand by my guns that we just have to mandate this because we need the to few good that is coming out of you, we need to, we need to protect everyone else. Everyone, yeah. So, yeah. And that's, is that a good or bad thing? I don't know because that's kind of how society seems to be going that way. It's like mm-hmm. in order to protect everyone, you throw on these blanket mandates mm-hmm. and um, it might not actually like do, is it actually going to help more people than it, then, then it's hurting. Like, I, I don't know. I right. Don't know. Like, cause if you say nobody can homeschool, yeah, you might protect these few people, mm-hmm. but you might be damaging a whole lot more. Other population. From, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to address <laughs> in this is she gives, I'm sure you read, she gives the example of Tara Westover in her, she, is, I think she did. She talked about the book educated Oh, right. She said something, but I don't know. I don't know about, yeah, yeah. So we actually own this book because one of my very, very, very good friends suggested that I read it and it was excellent. So it's called Educated by Tara Westover and Mm -hmm. it's a memoir and her memoir of growing up with her survivalist family. I think it was in Idaho. So they were, so she uses this example of how badly things can go with homeschooling because this the, there was abuse. There was, they weren't even homeschooled. There was no real schooling whatsoever. They were all just the like kids, live their life. All the kids. Well, he was like a crazy survivalist and all the kids were like, and he like paranoid of the government. He definitely, him and her older brother definitely had mental health issues. Um, like the father. Yes. And so all of the kids were forced into doing like hard, very dangerous labor at a scrapyard with him. There was so many injuries. Not only were they not allowed to school, they go to school. They were not allowed to seek medical help from anything, anything. And there were some really, really bad injuries. So she uses this as an example of how badly homeschool can go, which fair, like you're reading this and you can't even believe it's real life. What's happened to her. However, like how she ended up surviving. Yeah. However, she eventually tra- finds a way out and she f- gets high school. She ends up going to- okay, uh, She did her GED or whatever. Yeah, or she took a couple high school classes and- Yeah, and that's, that's yeah. a whole other thing. It's like high school, it's not hard. I like know. you could literally not do anything. And then like when you're older, when you have that, the ability to learn, mm-hmm. you just like, I'll study for a couple of weeks and take the test. And yeah. <laughs> So it's, she, it's like kind of a so joke. So she, she gets into a university. I forget what university it is here. I think she completes her degree and then she actually goes and gets accepted as some sort of big scholar at Cambridge University in England, gets her yeah. master's degree and then gets her PhD. So <laughs> as bad- Despite not going through school yes. and being subject and to all these things. despite being, sub, yeah. So it- but that's just, this is a one case. It's a one case scenario. But what I'm saying is, is it's not the greatest example for her to use because regardless of what happened to her, she was able to find the wherewithal to, you know, overcome that struggle and become successful. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, she still definitely, and she says it in the book, her family is completely divided over everything that had happened. And she still definitely, I'm sure, has lots and lots of issues mm-hmm. relating to everything that had happened is to she, her. Is she glad that she went through that or does she like completely hate everything? 
I think she's come to kind of terms with it. I don't know if she has found forgiveness, but you know, she's kind of come to terms with things. I think it's been a really long time since I read that book. I would right. probably have to read it again. So we own it actually. Yeah. So yeah, on Kindle. Um, but anyways, so I thought that was an interesting example that she used. Yeah, yeah. but it is, I mean, she's right. I mean, a, a child shouldn't have to go through through that kind of thing. Of course not. Um, of course But not. then the other example is like, maybe it's just almost like a bad example for like, how like the education system isn't necessary. Well, that's, and that's, I guess that's what I'm saying <laughs> you know? is it's really, it's a good but, and bad yeah, example. Yeah, but those, because there's, like I said, there's so many different independent issues that you need yes. to talk about. Number one is, who should even be like be be allowed to have kids? Number two, how well does a job does the school actually do in teaching? Yeah. Who is going to be actually teaching and who's deciding on what is yeah. right and what's wrong or what's what should be taught? Well, and then it's like there's so many there was there's so many issues with this story as well because it's not just about the impetus wasn't to homeschool. The impetus was this, the father has this paranoia because he has a mental illness of the government. So he should be paranoid. The government's out to get all of us. Well, but he always, (laughs) they had all these contingencies for, and he always thought, oh, the government's going to come to get us. And so this is where you need to go. And this is where all the guns are. So it's not just, it wasn't about homeschooling at all. It was about a mental illness that this man had. So yeah. Anyway. So, but then it's like, again, that goes back to, nutting up and she was able to overcome this struggle and how struggle can yeah, sometimes her. Yeah, make you point. flourish. Right. Yeah. So it was an incredible story of resilience. Yeah. I mean, there's no pro there's no progress without struggle. You have yeah. to struggle and you have to, and, and like for us, I mean, you have to be confronted with your views and, and different, different points yeah. of views. And reading this is, is pretty interesting. Like I need to read the actual mm-hmm. law story. So thank you for going, going over it and, and yeah. filling me in on it. But I still want to read it because well, I was going to say, I there's do, a ton of stuff in here. We did not talk about yeah. cause it goes pretty deep. Yeah. Cause I like, again, I, I do agree that there should be some type of, I, I want to say regulation. I don't know how, well, but there needs to be something. It's just like, I think that big tech companies, need to be regulated mm-hmm. because I think that they're out of control. They can yeah. just do whatever they want. Yeah. They can censor people and that's not okay. Well, right. And like, I've seen a couple home homeschool families where it's, yeah, I question what are you teaching your kids? And there's some families that, you know, apply the label of unschooler to them. And I'm just like, are you applying that label because that's what you think you're doing or are you just not you're, you're wanting just to lazy. teach? Yeah. And like, I don't, home. I yeah. don't know, but that, that gives me pause for sure. And so it is what, what, you know, what do you do with that as to protect kids? Right. And like, this is the thing, like when you're in society, right. Cause when you want to go drive, you don't bat any questions being like, how dare the government make me do a test? to make sure that I'm an appropriate and I'm a safe driver, oh. right? You don't care about that. No. So why, what if there was a test to go in to like make sure that you know your stuff so that you can teach other people? Yeah. That's the safety. You know what I mean? Well, that's, it's because it's well, not in place now. You're like, this is encroaching on my freedoms. Well, then the question is, what about the freedom of the child or the people? Like you said, they do have rights. They're humans yes. too. They're yes. their own humans. Yes. They should have a right in what they say to a certain point, yes. right? But then I think it's, it, then, you know, we need to talk about rights versus responsibilities. And so you have a right as a parent to parent. And then, but what are your, also, what are your responsibilities? Yeah, so as be a responsible to prove that you can teach them. Well, and that's, you know, yeah. I'd like, if we had to take it to bring on a test, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you said, these people, I'm going to unschool well, and that's whatever. Not what, yeah. I mean, that's not what she, like what her, what she kind of brought up was if you're she teaching this. Is, yeah. If you're, if you're going to be teaching like elementary aged school children, then you have to at least have a high school diploma. If you're going to teach upper, upper elementary and high school, then you need to have at least a bachelor's. Yeah. So that's kind of what she laid out. Sure. But that's, again, that's standardized testing where it's like, there's people that are professors or whatever. You hear about the, I learned calculus (laughs) in my, in in a cave or whatever. It's like, are they not qualified to teach it now because they don't have an education? Yeah. So, but yes, at least it is some kind of standard, but again, don't go by your credentials. Be like, have a test, right? Like how many people pass but then see, a I driver's would, test and be like, they can't drive at all. Yeah. 
that doesn't prove that you're actually a good driver, right? So how can you prove? Again, yeah. I don't know if it's a. Te- I don't know what it is. I don't. Know. Uh, I don't know. But I, I don't disagree with her on that. I point. know. I. You know what I, I mean? was. I was the same thing, and I think you know, protecting children should be, should be number one. Yeah, and I never thought about that until so reading this stuff. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there are. There should be some. It's not saying that you can't homeschool or whatever, but there should be limitations somehow mm-hmm. on if people aren't able. To, to do it properly. Yeah. And I, I, again, I don't think that the solution is just throw them in school because I don't go to school anyways. Right. So that's another no. issue. Right. But. No. And school is great for some kids. Like that's, you know, but again, it's because everyone is different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the idea of school, I think it obviously is fantastic. You get yes. your peers together. You can interact with your peers. 100%. You can learn together. You have to learn how to socialize. You have to learn how to interact with people. Yeah. Hundred percent. If school was, if school was not political, if it wasn't mm-hmm. a business, if it wasn't about money yeah. and funding, and there's only whatever. If we were like actually like we just want to do what's best for our kids, mm-hmm. we could restructure it completely into something that actually does educate people. And you know, if kids do have harder times, it's like it's not like a, you know what I mean. It's not like a great system. It's just like mm-hmm. everyone just gets together and well, the and kids so, that are older helps the kids that are younger and teaching and so you know here, all that so, kind of stuff. So there is a there is a school right. I think in Toronto, right? We're talking about that. Well, I don't know if it's in Toronto, but there's definitely one. Um, it's actually called the Sudbury Valley School, but it it is in um, it's in the states somewhere. I don't know where, um, but it's a, it's a democratic schooling so that. Um, even like the, the kids have to vote on whether a teacher comes back each year. So your job isn't necessarily your job, but it's more they're yeah, How many bad teachers did you have? <laughs> so, so that part's, that part's interesting, but it's basically kind of like a hybrid, right? And so it's a more, there's a free age mixing where yes, there's little kids are helping, or sorry, big kids are helping little kids and then, yeah. Yeah, and if there was actually systems in place to like watch out for kids that are being bullied or whatever yes. to make sure that stuff doesn't happen because yes. it's a business and there's not enough people to monitor what's yeah. going on, yeah. you know, and it's, yeah, that's why there's issues, but like the idea of school and a community yeah. and being a part of a community and having yes. kids taught, I think it's fantastic. It's fantastic, of course. But the way that it's run now and how it's run and how yeah. politicized it is and, yeah. you know, that's my objections to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. Know. It's tough. It's tough. But I just thought it was, it, it's funny because I feel like I came away with it the same way you did was I was just like, oh yeah, she does bring up some really important points that we do definitely need as a society, society to, consider. to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Not for us. Cause I think we're doing a fine job. I think so. Um, Try to. But that being said, if, if we, how about like any, do you like remember any, oh gosh, she, kids don't have bad days at school or kids going to yeah. the principal office yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a terrible, I was a terrible student. Um, uh, Sent uh, anyways, <laughs> um, I wasn't gonna say, um, but like, even if we were to do standardized testing mm-hmm. or a test every year, I don't think I don't know how well our kids would do because we don't even teach, like you said, in the order that yeah. the school board teaches. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, if, are you in grade four? Well, you have to pass this grade four level yeah. testing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you failed, we'll get back in school. Like, oh, well, maybe our kids in grade 12 level reading, but grade two level in. Well, yeah. geography or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then therefore you, you're not going to, you know what I mean? So there's yeah. so many, there's there's so, so many much nuance in there yeah. um, that, Absolutely. That, that won't be accounted for and, Absolutely. and it, it needs to be. I will say like, I do think the Nova Scotia does do, I don't, I don't know what the regulations are in other provinces. I think actually in Quebec, you're not at all. I don't think, I think it's illegal to homeschool. I think it is, yes. I will say. Which is crazy, which is but crazy. there's a lot of places. I said here too, what, Germany and there's some other places that yeah. it's illegal to homeschool. So France, when this was written, this was 2020, summer 2020, but France now, I'm pretty sure it's illegal now to homeschool there. Um, yeah. But the, but I think how they do it here, at least they're making an effort here to try and make parents accountable for what their kids are learning. So, and then even just to have an idea, because even like when we in Ontario, when we pulled the kids out, we did do the letter of intent to homeschool, but the kids had already been in school. I think if you never put your kids in school, you probably wouldn't even know to do that. Right. So to there's no the record. The kids weren't even be in the system. 
Like that's what I'm saying, right? So there, you wouldn't even know to do that. So you're missing those kids. So I think that is kind of an issue. But at least here, you know, you got you got to file something. You at least got to go through the motions. So I think that is, it's it's something. It's better than yeah. Ontario for sure. So yeah. Yeah, but again, like you said, you were, you're, you don't even want to give your curriculum. You know, it's like oh, it's just what the hell I'm, with you. Well, because I'm just like who the hell. Do you think you are? <laughs> Tell me how to raise my kids. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. And that's where you have to justify or balance. Yeah. Your individual freedom versus the, the good whole. Because yeah. too, like I am all for freedoms and all that kind of stuff, but it's, you're not free to do anything you want at all. Well, the point ever. is, is with like freedoms right? comes responsibility. There is, right? Like yes. I like smoking laws. I'm, I'm very glad that it's illegal to smoke like indoors and mm -hmm. at restaurants or whatever, because I had a hell of a time with that when it was yeah, legal. Yeah. It was like, yo, it's my right to smoke. It's like, yeah, well, it's my right to breathe but fresh air, right? Yeah, cancer. it's like, I mean, that's ridiculous, right? So yeah. there's, you know, or like you can't just yell fire in the middle yes. of a, a movie theater or yes. whatever and just say all these things. Like you can't just speak nonsense or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, I shouldn't say that you can't speak nonsense, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it's, if you're putting other people in danger or what have you, then you don't Citing have the freedom violence. to just do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's another issue for another day because inciting violence is completely, I that know. term means nothing, nothing because if you just say, like, what is it Twitter now? If you say a man is a man and a woman is a woman, you get banned for inciting you're, violence, right? Like that's, you're done. Anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. conversation. We'll talk about that yeah. uh, uh, another but, time, I guess. But well, I, we're not, but I think like to kind of conclude things, like I think what I learned from this is definitely it's always important to look at other points of view because not only does it challenge your own beliefs and try to make you think differently and strengthen yep. maybe your arguments for things by learning what other people are saying about it. Um, it also humanizes the person that is on the other side and you can more fully understand where they're coming from because and not just say, Oh, they're the enemy. They're stupid. I'm going to silence you and, and just like not, or not even listen to you. And easily I could have said that about, Oh, you're just against homeschool. No, like she has, she just wants to protect kids and the rights of kids. Like she's coming from a really important yeah. place. And so it humanized it for me instead of just yeah. like, Oh, this article is trash. So I think that's really important. I think it's important. Again, it goes to, this is why censorship is so bad and the cancel culture is so bad. So it just reinforced to me how, how important an open dialogue is in our society, in a democratic society. <laughs> That's another, yes. another thing. Yep. So not only that, but then it, it did really, it, it did give me pause and really make me think, you know, maybe it's because I was really against this whole Nova Scotia thing about making yeah. you register your kid and everything. But now I'm just like, no, there's... There's, there's reasons there's for it. Reasons I can understand it. No, why I it's really there. understand. It's not about oversight. It's not about not wanting you to educate your own child. It's about protecting, protecting other kids yeah, and that, 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 that might and, not yeah. have that protection. So it was a really good exercise for me. So yep. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And yeah, I, the, the whole thing is it, it all boils down to uh, like part of the whole nut up thing. And, and for, for Andrew and I, it's, it's, it's learning new things and how we can Always. better live the, the life that we want to live. Always. And a big part of that is education and educating ourselves mm -hmm. uh, and learning about what's out there and what other people are saying and trying to incorporate that into our lives to figure out how we can apply it to make yeah. our lives better. Yeah. So this is stuff that we read about education of our kids, but it goes the same thing. A big thing that we have is our health and how do we take care, best take care of our health yeah. and um, you know, our nutrition. And mm -hmm. obviously there's the big thing going on now with the pandemic and, you know, government saying like everyone just needs to get the vaccine or whatever. Yeah. And that's that. It's like, is again, the same, is that the solution? Everyone mm -hmm. just has to get it. And that's best for everyone. Mm -hmm. Really do. Does everyone need to get it? What about people that could have reactions, all kinds of things mm -hmm. to consider, but that we, it's not just stopping at what one person says. And that's the be all end all. You just always need to be reading and researching and, and growing as an individual. Always growing and always reevaluating your position. Always. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. So we're not going to stop homeschooling, obviously, um, <laughs> after reading this. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it does give pauses to thinking about how we handle it as a society because there are yeah. things that we, we that do need to be better. Yeah. Um, after reading this, it's not just maybe our 
previous stance of like, oh, we're just homeschool. What the hell with you? We're going to do yeah. what we want. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's more nuanced and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I, I don't have anything else. I'm just I rambling. So I was, uh, hopefully it wasn't too political because I don't like, I don't want to get talking politics and stuff like that. You, you kind of have to a little bit uh, to understand the different positions and, yeah. and, and things that are going on. But, yeah. but overall, uh, you know, hopefully this was at least somewhat useful to you. To yeah. listening about and like not just about homeschooling, but just about like challenging your beliefs yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because mine definitely were when I read this, so yep. which is good. It yep. made me think it exercised. It's important exercised to exercise the old noggin up in your there. body, but also your brain. Hundred <laughs> percent. There you go. There you go. There exercise you go. the noggin. Your mind. <laughs> All right. All with right. that, thanks have for a, watching. Thanks for a lot. Nut up this week. Have a good week. Yeah. Have a great week. Yeah. Get the shit done. Write down yeah. five things you want to get done. Do it. Do it. Cool. See you later. Have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>